Hi, I'm Antonio Sala. In this video, we will show how to use a numerical integrator ODE45 to simulate a closed loop, controlling an unstable pendulum with a proportional plus derivative PD control. We will programmatically encode the closed loop equations, avoiding the need of using, say, a Simulink's graphical user interface, for instance. These are the state equations, derivative of position, speed, and derivative of speed, acceleration of a pendulum depicted in this figure, in which we have a mass, which is joined to a rod of length L, articulated on a rotation axis. The rod itself, we will assume that it has negligible mass or inertia. This will be the torque exerted by gravity and zero will be the equilibrium in the upright unstable position. So this will be the nonlinear model we are going to simulate. Constant parameters for simulation, length, friction coefficients, gravity, mass, will be fixed in this line. As the PD controller will be a linear one, we need to specify the operating point in order to compute changes to incremental variables and from incremental variables needed for linearized operation. However, in this particular case, the point in which we will operate y, the angle, will be zero, and the torque there is zero. So we could have skipped using these variables in MATLAB code. However, I leave there intentionally because in a generic case, these variables are indeed needed, so the code later on will be closer to what a controller for a linear process will need. But here is just by chance, let's say that zero in incremental coordinates corresponds to zero in our absolute units. The above equations will be encoded in MATLAB as a state equation like this. I will input clock, state and input and the derivative of the first state will be the second one. The time derivative of the second state will be the acceleration, this expression. The output that will be available for feedback is just the position, but I will put here the output equation. The process order will be two because we have two states. X will be a vector with two components. So this is the model of my process. Let's go with the model of the controller to be simulated. This will be the controller in Laplace transform, a proportional plus derivative term, and the derivative term will be filtered by a low pass filter with a bandwidth of, in this case, 20 radians per second. Proportional derivative and bandwidth parameters have been hand-tuned trial and error and that's it. In order to integrate differential equations, we need state space representations, so we transform the controller in the Laplace domain to equations in time domain, the standard ABCD state space. So these are the matrices. Building a state space representation of my controller, it's order one because of the derivative filter, and we'll now code state and output equations of the controller. So we will have a model of everything in the closed loop and the controller in there will have a state equation in which the input to the controller will be the sensors Y. The controller will have a state. I will call it X because, well, I can call it in any way I wish. I mean, this is just a parameter there. So the A matrix of the internal representation is multiplied by X and the B matrix of the controller's internal representation is multiplied by the increment of the measurement with respect to the operating point. And this minus here will indicate a negative feedback connection. Look that minus increment of output, which is this thing, trivially removing the parentheses. It's just this expression, which is the loop error. So the output operating point in generic linearization, it's actually the set point 
when we are discussing the linearization of a controller. And this is the loop error, set point minus measurement. So this is the state equation. And what happens with the output equation? Well, in a textbook situation, the torque will be the C matrix of the controller by the state plus the D matrix of the controller by the input, which is minus the increment of controlled variable. However, as we are simulating a nonlinear setup, then we will need to change that to absolute coordinates, to absolute units, and also saturate it. These two lines model how to saturate a torque, upper limit and lower limit, and this carries out the saturation. So we end up with this way to encode the output equation with saturation, in which we have the linear part, Cx plus D input, and then we add the operating point of the torque. In this case, it's zero, but in a generic case, it can be anything. So we add it to have it into absolute non-incremental value of torque. And afterwards, we saturate that, and that will be the output actually fed to the process. Let us now analyze the core of this video, which is how to build the closed loop state equations. We have in the model M, the open loop state and output equations of the plant and the controller. We will define a function, closed loop state equation, whose output will be the derivative of the joint process and control state vector, just stacked in vertical. Its inputs will be the clock. If I had some function of time or time varying parameter, the process state, angular position and velocity of the mass in the pendulum, the control state, which is associated to the derivative filter, and as I say, this M with the model. So to simulate a control loop, we first simulate the measurements, which is the output equation corresponding to the controlled process. And we will assume that those measurements do not depend on input. Say the process matrix D, if this were a linear one, is zero. No di direct input to output fit through, because otherwise this code will be incorrect. More on that in a few seconds. Once we have the measurements, then we will compute the derivative of the controller state, which is just evaluating the controller state equation with this clock, with the controller state at this moment, and the measurements, which are the input to the controller. Also, we evaluate the controller output manipulated variable, u or torque in this case, given the current control state and the current measurements. As I said, if the measurements depended also on u, then once I compute this u, I should compute the measurements again. And with these new measurements, I would compute a different u. And so I will have this kind of loop, everything happening at the same instant of time t. And this is what we call an algebraic loop. And hence, in that case, this code we will need some kind of algebraic equation solver to compute things here. But as I said, we will forget about that because we wish to keep things simple and it's not needed in this pendulum simulation. So assuming no algebraic loop, this line computes the correct control action. And once I have the control action, which is the input to my process, then evaluating the process state equation with the process state at time t and the input u, then I get the derivative of the process state. So the derivative of everything together is just stacking in a longer column, the derivative of the process state and the derivative of the controller state. Good. So this is the core of this video, how to close loops instead of with uh, boxes and arrows and mouses in Simulink with MATLAB code. A second note is that if the controller had not stayed, for instance, if the controller is 
plainly a proportional control, then I will not have control state and I would not need to compute any derivative of the non-existing controller state. I would not need this argument. So this will be the code needed to implement a proportional controller. In this case, we have a controller state, so we will keep it like this. And now we are in conditions to execute the simulation. We will build a single state vector, and then the first two elements of that will be the process state. The third one will be the controller state. So OD45 will call this function passing the clock and the full state. And in this function, I will evaluate the closed loop state equation, passing it the clock and the first two elements of the full state as process state. The third element of the full state as controller state and the model with the separate process and controller state and output equations. With all that, this will execute this code we discussed. So the remaining things are setting up initial conditions and calling the differential equation solver, OD45 for, for instance, to carry out the simulation. And that would finish. For instance, we can set up initial conditions for the pendulum states, position pi over 30, let's say, and zero speed, and the initial condition for the controller set to zero. So x0 will be the initial condition of the joint plant plus controller state vector. I simulate six seconds. The derivative of the overall state vector is this OD fun. This is the simulation starting and finish time, initial condition, and any desired options such as tolerances. If we execute, we will get a set of simulation times and states. In this case, for instance, it has output three states, two first columns correspond to the pendulum states, third column to the controller state at 201 time instants. The step size depends on how things are changing at the particular instant and the desired accuracy. So if we plot the columns corresponding to the first and second, the states of the process, we get this time plot of position in blue and angular velocity in red. So the controller stabilizes the pendulum. Nevertheless, meaningful things are usually encoded as outputs. In this case, the process output position and the controller output, the applied torque, can be obtained by evaluating the output equations. For each of the samples, I evaluate the output equation, giving to that equation the time of that sample, the process state of that sample, then I get the output of the plant, the angular position, and if I feed that output of the plant as input to my controller, then the controller output equation has the arguments, the time of the sample, the controller state, the third column of x. I transposed because OD45 gives me the states in rows, but these output equations assume that they have column form. So with all that, I get the control value so I can plot the position. And with this other plot, here we have the control output. Let us now compare this nonlinear simulation with this linear simulation we would have obtained if we had simulated with the control system toolbox the linearized model. You can check that this is the linearization of the pendulum equations and the cosine of the operating point is just one, in this case, the unstable one. So this A matrix is that the derivative of the first state is the second one, this row 0, 1. And this thing that multiplies the increment of position is here. And this thing that multiplies the increment of speed is here. And this element that multiplies the increment of torque is here and output is the position. So with this, I build a 
control system toolbox object encapsulating the state state representation of this linearized module. Then the feedback inter interconnection that we did here in a generic nonlinear case. Well, if both systems are linear, the feedback command computes this kind of closed loop state and output equations. The poles are stable, negative real part. And how do I carry out the linear simulation with non-zero initial conditions? Well, with the initial command from the control system toolbox, I put here the closed loop. I put here the initial conditions in incremental coordinates. Luckily, this is actually zero, so units are the same. So I will superimpose with the plots with a nonlinear simulation without any change of variable. And if I compare with ODE45 nonlinear one, they are coincident because the initial angular displacement was very small, so linearized assumptions were valid. If I set to pi over 10 my initial condition, then there is a little saturation in the controller output, so linear and non-linear simulations will differ. Here we have it. Then actual non-linear pendulum cannot be pushed as fast as the linearized one because it's saturating. With this 45 degree initial deviation, the torque saturates for a long time. So linear and nonlinear simulations are very different. But at the end, we can lift the pendulum to the upright position, but we are just in the limit of what we can do. And indeed, if my initial conditions were like pi over three radians, then our saturation limit will not have enough torque to lift the pendulum so it will fall down to the vicinity of the downward equilibrium okay we are trying to push it upwards but we cannot so it falls and oscillates around there because we are exerting a torque but it's not enough to lift this thing to the upward equilibrium however that will never happen in a linearized simulation in which saturation is non-existing and for any initial position, this blue line will have exactly the same shape, but it will just be proportional to the initial increment. So we will finish our video here. Let us conclude. In this video, we have learned how to encode process and controller state and output equations. We have also learned how to join this process and controller state space models in a joint closed loop state equation. So we use ODE45 to simulate the process output without the need of simulink. So with this, we end this video. Thanks for watching.